In the last episode, we went from the design process of this picture of a Tesla pickup truck, an astronaut and a SpaceX Starship on the surface of Mars. We went from the design of that painting up to the point where I'd painted the Tesla pickup. And now we're going to pick up from that point on to completion of the painting. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. Last the time had come to put the portrait into the space helmet. Now my subject actually looked more like a rolling stone than he does your typical astronaut. So it was always going to be a fun challenge. It's not easy to paint a likeness the size of your thumb, freehand, within the confines of a glass space helmet. And those of you watching at home would be well advised to carefully measure everything out before even attempting such a task. I, on the other hand, the seasoned professional, I was able to accomplish this feat with absolutely no trouble at all. In fact, I repeated it three times for no reason other than just to prove that it could be done. And so I decided to abandon doing the face for the time being. And at this stage, I continued with a rolling stone staring back at me. I would return to the face in due course with a wet cloth, wipe it off and redo it a final time, making sure that I got those proportions right within the space helmet. <laughs>
decided to make my astronaut figure a sort of turquoise blue-green colour. And I think that's going to be actually a very good a very good colour for the spacesuits to be when they actually go to Mars because it's the colour opposite to the surface of Mars and the sky of Mars. Um, so it makes them stand out and that's going to be very important for the uh, early pioneers that go there, you know, who might get stranded in a dust storm. Visibility is going to be an important feature. Um, so I think, uh, I think the blue, green, turquoise um, was a good choice, not just for the painting, but maybe in real life too. And so with the astronaut figure well underway, it was time to throw myself enthusiastically back into doing all those Martian rocks. I've deliberately slowed the video down a little bit so that you can see more clearly the movements of my hands. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Did anybody see that? Did you notice what I did there? If I slow the film right down, you can see that I'm using a green in the shadows. Now this is ambient light. This is, I'm, I'm obsessed with ambient light. This green is the same green that I'm using in the astronaut suit and also in the car. I used it there as well. And the reason for this is a very important one. It's because light bounces off everything that's within a scene. All the elements affect the other elements. Light travels and it bounces off one colored object and affects the colors of the objects around it. So the reason I'm using the green is that's reflected ambient green light coming from my astronaut and from the car and indeed the light on the car is coming from the astronaut as well. Now you might think this a trivial matter but it's actually a real key element to painting realism and something absolutely to bear in mind if you're wanting to paint realistic scenes. Exactly 2,386 rocks later, I could wait no more. That face had to be got right. I decided to give it my full attention one final time to get it exactly the way that I wanted it to look. You know, there's a bit of a sort of lesson in there, you know, no matter no matter what things certain things in a picture have to be right and it's a bit like robert the bruce and the spider isn't it if at first you don't succeed then try try and try again be critical of everything that you do and only let the highest standard of work go through to the final finished product the person I'm painting here is actually a good friend of mine and he's a great guy. So it was really important to me to do justice to his character because uh, it's key to the success of this painting. So it wouldn't matter if I'd had to do it 20 times. Um, he had to look right. He had to look like himself, of course.
few final touches here and there, just getting the painting ready to put on my signature. Now, I'd like to just take a moment to thank everybody who subscribes to my channel. Uh, I really do appreciate that. And I do understand that most of you who do are wanting to see more of the wildlife subjects of, uh, you know, the lions, the tigers. I do appreciate that. I get it. And I'm going to be doing plenty of that, trust me, in the future. It's just that each painting that comes along, this one happened to be a commission. So it, um, it had to be done in this particular order. So uh, don't worry, there is other things coming. But I hope that in this video, you know, you've uh, learned a little bit about the way I go about the landscape element. I mean, you know, that's important in wildlife art as well. It's, it's uh, very much overlooked by a lot of people. And a landscape, be it on Mars or uh, on the Earth, pretty much the same approach. Um, you can just see me here adding all those final details. As I say, it's quite an involved process with pastels, but as long as you get the light and the shadow in, you pay attention to your ambient light sources, all those kind of things, you can put together with pastel quite a, a realistic looking landscape. Uh, so I hope, you, I hope you've taken something away from this video anyway, and I do appreciate uh, your subscriptions, and I, uh, I will see you in the next one. One final thing, how could I possibly do something about the planet Mars without mentioning Elon Musk, perhaps the most important man alive today. Elon is determined to make humanity a multi-planetary species and he's well on the way and I wish him all the best and all the luck. It's, uh, it's an incredible endeavor uh, what he's doing uh, for all of us, for all humanity, taking us to the stars. Thank you, Elon Musk. Amazing, amazing man.